Today I'm going to show you how you can make plates on the potter's wheel in a really easy and fast way. For a long time I didn't want to do plates because, yeah, well, two reasons. One of them being that I thought it would be difficult to get the plates right, uh, the way I want them and stuff. And the other reason was some technicalities about the firing. And we'll get back to that later. But what I found when I started working with different designs of plates, and I found the one that I like the most, uh, that I could do it in a super easy and very fast way and it turns out beautiful. So that's what I'm going to show you today. This is a very typical dinner plate. Sort of like a standard plate from Ikea. And yes, I do have Ikea crap in my kitchen as well. <laughs> the problem with this plate is that it's uh, almost too big to fit my dishwasher. And if you look at the size, it's about 28 and a half centimeter. But really, the only part of it that you can use is only 19 centimeter. The rest of it is this flange. And uh, this part is actually the most difficult part to make especially if you want to do you know, decorations and stuff, because it's rather weak out there. So what I was thinking is, why not make a plate, because I do like big plates, but in reality this looks bigger than it really is. So I thought, why not make a plate that is more close to the inner circle of this? So the design I'm going to do today is only going to be um, the size of the inner circle of this plate. So I'm going to do make it about 22 centimeter. It's going to be a very small flange, and um, that's going to make it much easier to make. It will fit my dishwasher, and I will still have enough room for all my wonderful food. And also, by having this little flange that is about 45 degrees, the inside, uh, the foot, will fit the inside of the plate. So they will be easy to stack, which is another practical thing that I like about my plate. For this particular design, I'm going to use this uh, high iron um, stoneware that is from Jochsen Schneider in Germany. I really, really like it. It does have a lot of grog, it says 40%, but also see that it's very, very small, 0 to 0.2 millimeter. So it doesn't actually feel very groggy. And it's high iron, so it turns out beautiful, especially with glazes that uh, react to the iron, such as the Fogart Guild white and some other places like that. So, and it's very nice, clay, uh, very nice clay to throw, so I'm gonna use that today. When you're working on new designs, I find that it's easiest to start out with a lot more clay than you are going to use. But since I already uh, did this plate uh, a few times now, I know that uh, the perfect weight for this, for me at least, the way that I throw, is um, 800 grams. So I think this is Almost there. Ah, actually, it was a little bit too much. 800 grams. Depending on what kind of clay you use and what uh, producer you're using, uh, you need to wedge it. Some potters will tell you you always have to wedge your clay, but that's not entirely true. Uh, most of the stoneware from Jorsen Schneider in Germany are so well compressed that there's no air bubble and particles are very well aligned. You can actually just take this and put it on the wheel. I do like to give them just a little bit of a wedging, um, because especially uh, with plates, they're more sensitive. It's uh, They're sensitive to cracking and you don't want any bubbles because you have that clean surface. And yeah, well, for this, um, I just give it a quick wedge, but but this clay is actually very good. So I'm um, just gonna do it like that. And if it sounds like I'm working hard, I am. <laughs> When doing plates, I highly recommend that you use beds. I have pins on my uh, wheel, so I can just uh, take them off easily like that. If you don't have pins, you can just throw uh, like a layer of clay on your wheel head, and then you can attach the bed on top of it. I would also recommend that you use a bed where the clay sort of releases itself when it's drying. Um, the preferred way of doing that is using a plaster bed like this. I don't have any plaster beds with pinholes. So I'm using uh, this wood bed because I like my pins. 
So um, this is a wooden bed, um, and I just know by experience that if I let it slowly dry, the clay would actually release itself, and I can take it off. Because you don't want to wire the plates. At least I don't do that. Because if you wire them and you have a relatively thin button, there's a very high risk because the wire will bend up a little bit when you do large areas, and then there's a risk that you're going to cut a hole in it. Of course. We don't want that. So, let's get on with the throwing. The first thing you do, as always, is to center your clay. Uh, but unlike when you do a cylinder, a cup, a bowl, or something, you're not going to open it up immediately. Instead, we're going to expand it, and I'm going to use the palm of my hand to do that. I'm going to expand it almost to the size of the plate, a little less than that. And only then, are we going to start the opening? There are two uh, couple of tricks to doing this expansion. I will show you in a second. One thing is use a lot of water, and it's a lot more than you would usually use, and you would think you need to use. And in fact, when I start to expand it, you will see that I have to stop on the way because I'm drying out. And if you dry out, the plate is going to be uneven. So I need to put more water on on the way. The other thing is, as you can probably see when I'm starting, I hold my left hand in the edge. So I'm pushing out and holding back with the left hand. That way I will secure that it stays circular. So that's the two main things. So um, let's start out with that. It's always a good idea to start out with a very well centered uh, clay ball. But for plates, it's even more important that the lower part is very well centered because that's what's going to form the edges when you get out here. So, now we're going to start expanding it. And as I said, it does need a lot of water. See, now it's getting too dry. Don't continue if it's too dry, add more water. Now you see, it stays almost entirely circular. It's not big enough yet, and it's also way too thick. Um, so we're gonna do some more. Start from the middle and work your way out. And now it's too dry again. So adding more water. And again, make sure that it's still circular. So just to make sure that uh, where exactly you are, I'm going to see here. Yeah, well, we have a way to go. So um, I will give it another go here. And again, start from the middle. Push out. Need to add more water. You see, it is a lot of water. And of course, a lot of this water is going to end up <laughs> in, um, in your splash pan, but um, that's okay. For a strange reason, <laughs> uh, you would think that if you apply the same pressure all the way, it's going to be flat. But no, you actually have to apply a lot more pressure in the middle than in the edges. It's probably because there's no way inside the, the center of it where the clay can go except for out there. When you get to the edges, it's very easy for the, for the clay to sort of escape. And see, now it's 21 to the edge. So we still need to get it a little bit bigger. So now it's 20, almost 23 and a half. So that's a little more than we need. So now I can go in just a little bit. Out. You can use different kind of uh, ribs if you like. I like this. It's from a builder's market and very, very cheap. So um, this is good to sort of make it even. Mm -hmm. 
As you see, it's almost completely flat now, which is what I'm aiming for for this sort of design. I do leave it a little bit thicker out here, but not much. Now I'm just going to clean the edge a little bit, and at the same time, I'll make sure it's just slip. I'll make sure that um, it's uh, even. I don't measure the thickness of my plate because I already did that and I found out that 800 grams and 22 centimeter is going to make um, a perfect thic thickness. Uh, but of course when you, when you will be working on your own design, um, you should of course, uh, as I said, you can start out with, a, with more clay than you need, uh, but then once you um, once you figure out uh, the exact size and stuff, you need to um, you need to um, measure the, the thickness and then adjust the, um, the amount of clay that you'll be using. The next thing we need to do is now we need to raise the edge because right now it's just a flat dish, um, which could also be nice, but. I do want to have that uh, bit of a, I think it's called a flange, isn't it? Maybe you can put it in the comments if I'm totally wrong, but I think it is. And to do the initial uh, lifting of the edge, I'm going to use this wooden tool. You can use anything you want. I'm making it wet and I'm also making sure that we have a lot of water again. Because now, don't go too fast, I'm going to cut in under here. I'm going to do the initial lifting. So that's it. Much more than that, you don't need to do with this tool. The next one is, uh, I use a wooden bit, but the thing is, I need something that has the angle that I want. And this one has the perfect angle for my design. Push it a little more up the side of my tool. And there we go. We're almost done now. this one where I have this uh, curved edge I'm just gonna um, sort of make a, a more distinct um, transition from the flat area into the flange so um, again it's a designation and um, what, I, what I found that, that I like so that's it and we have the edge here and be careful not to um, to um, to reach uh, dry areas here because then it's gonna gonna you know, flip around for you and become uneven. And um, yeah, that's almost the design that I like. And now, if you notice that the because of the angle here, I will I will not do much trimming on this. Um, I will turn it around and I will cut a little bit off the foot so the foot becomes smaller than the inside here. That way, they can stack perfectly. So the only thing left for my design, and again, you don't have to do it exactly the same way I do, is that I'm gonna add a little bit of a decoration here. So I'm just gonna use my finger and do this. Um, that way. And um, to make sure that it doesn't stick out too much, I'm just gonna use a sponge on top of it sort of take the edges. But with the kind of glaze that I'm expecting, um, I'm planning to use, that breaks nice over edges, this is gonna look really nice. Some people hate it because food can get stuck in that, but it's, it's very weak. Um, it's not very steep, not very high edges. I'm just gonna make sure that we still, just as the last thing you do, make sure that um, the flange have exactly the angle that you want. It looks good if um, the place you do have sort of the same angle, and that's 
why having a wooden tool like this can be helpful. The last thing you may want to do is to just uh, tighten up the edge with um, with a chamois or whatever you use. Some people use plastic. I just use this um, little piece of cutout. And just make sure that the ending looks really good. I think that's it. So let's do a few more. So now my plates have dried for about 24 hours or so. I know that uh, lots of potters will tell you that when you do plates, you need to um, dry them very, very slowly and cover them with plastic and all sorts of things. But in my experience, when you work with high grog clay, this is 40% uh, grog, but a very fine grog, grog. Uh, you don't really need that. So these ones have dried for, yeah, well, a little over 24 hours and as I told you they will release themselves from the bed when they're ready and so let's see yeah you see they go off quite easy and if you look at the bottom it's uh, very nice and clean so um, that's good and it's actually releasing itself just before it's too dry to trim keep in mind that we're not going to do a lot of trimming so let's um, go to the wheel and I'll show you what I'll do with these ones. In general, when you trim your plates, you have to be very careful because you don't want to apply too much pressure here because then it will bend down. In order to help avoid that, I usually put something on the inside. This is just some bubble plastic. You can do some, some uh, a sponge or something like that. It will just help um, with, um, with the pressure you're putting on. And then when you put it down on your wheel head, be very careful. Uh, you don't want to dump it too hard. So now I have it centered and uh, I'm just going to attach these small pieces of clay to secure it. And when you do that, press it down to the wheel head, not into the pot, because that way you can break the walls. They are, I mean, they're not super thin, but still you could break them. Remember, this is um, unfired um, clay, so it's very fragile. That's enough to secure it. I'm just going to do very light trimming. There's a little bit of a sharp edge here. I don't want that. I'm going to round it off um, just slightly. Oops. Before I turned it, and I should of course have showed you that, I measured the inside of my plate to make sure that the button is smaller than the inside, so they stack well. And in this case, I think we're perfect, so um, that's good. I just rounded it a little bit, um, and that's it. Um, I'm also going to use a metal grip and just uh, just clean the button so that I'm sure that there's no nothing sticking out. Um, it's not much, I'm not actually trimming it, I'm just, um, well, shaving it a little bit. Just shaving off a little bit here. Just make sure you don't leave any particles there. I haven't, I haven't, I'm not planning on trimming any foot on these ones. I just want a, 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 a smooth uh, surface. Um, if you want um, a foot on your plate, 
you need, of course, a little bit of a thicker button, maybe one and a half centimeter, maybe even two centimeter, depending on how thick or how tall you want the foot. But these ones, just a little below one centimeter, and that's enough uh, for this. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this shiny stone. I don't know where I got it from, but I use it to polish uh, uh, the, the corner and, and the bottom. Remember, this part is not going to have any glaze, <clears throat> so I want it smooth and nice, and I don't want it to leave any marks on my table. I think that's it. The only thing left now is to um, add my maker's mark. Um, to get it off can be a little bit difficult, so for that I also use my metal rib and just um, put it under very careful and lift it up. And that way you don't make any marks. So the only thing left is now for the maker's mark and I have this beautiful stamp that I got made. I think I can add a link here to uh, where I actually got it from. Uh, it's a girl in uh, Ukraine, Alina, who makes them. And it's very good quality and actually very cheap and then you can support Ukraine the same way. And um, so I'm going to hold my hand on the back so I don't push through or don't leave any mark. So um, I'm going to try. If it's too dry, you can add a little bit of water so that you kind of make it softer again. But I think in this case, in this case, I think it turned out nice. So now it's ready to dry completely. And I'm not going to dry them like this. I'm going to take them apart. I just want to show you how, how nice they actually stack, um, fit perfectly into each other. In my own workshop here in my house, I uh, primarily do stoneware. Sometimes I do a little bit of porcelain for pit fire, but mostly I do stoneware. But I also go to another workshop. I, um, I'm getting some training from uh, one of Denmark's finest potters, uh, Christian Braun, in his workshop. And in that one, we only do porcelain. So, of course, I also did some plates there in uh, porcelain. And uh, I will not show you how I actually throw them, because it's essentially the same way I do it in uh, stoneware. But I will show you a little bit about how I, um, how I um, uh, uh, dry them <laughs> and, uh, and how to trim them. So, let's go and check out that workshop. In this workshop, we have a rather large um, bedroom or damp box um, where we keep the things for drying. And this way, it will dry really, really slow, uh, which for porcelain plates is uh, sort of required, <laughs> unlike the stoneware that we just talked about. So this has been actually sitting here for about a week. So I'll take it out now and see if it has re released itself from, um, from the beds. And then I will do a little bit of trimming on the back, but not that much. So now I got all the plates uh, that I made in porcelain out of the damp box. And um, as you can see, they actually also release themselves very easily. Take them off, and then you have this nice bottom. It's hard to see here, but because I didn't wire them off, they're very smooth and nice. So with these ones too, I'm just going to do some very light trimming. It's just the corner because there's some, yeah, a little bit left there. I just want to make it nice and round and smooth. Here I'm going to do the same thing as I did with my stoneware. I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, bubble plast in here. So at about the same level as my, um, my plate. I'm carefully going to turn it around and put it here. And then just doing a bit of centering. And on this, I'm using this um, spongy thing, um, like a mattress or something. So I, because we're using um, clay on these wheel heads, I can't put it directly on. So we have this uh, bed with this. And it actually sticks okay, so um, I don't need to, um, to put anything down to, to, to secure it. It will usually stay. And again, we're not going to do, I'm not going to do um, any heavy um, trimming. It's just, you see this, there's a little bit of 
yeah, were left over from my drawing. And that's what I'm gonna remove and make it nice and round. Trimming porcelain is so different from trimming um, stoneware. Of course, you don't have the grok in it, at least not in this porcelain, and it feels much more like, I don't know, cutting in butter or something. <laughs> Now I have a nice round edge. I generally don't like um, edges, especially on porcelain, to be too sharp because they they um, they tend to chip off. And uh, by keeping it uh, a little more soft like this, um, it secures it against uh, the chipping. And again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to scrape the bottom. So I'm not actually trimming the button, I'm just um, making sure that it's nice and even and um, there's no, um, ah, well, small cracks, or not cracks, but, well, you know, inconsistencies. We want a smooth button. So now it's nice and smooth, and um, just like I did with, um, with the stoneware, I also want to um, I just wanna burnish the edges. Let me just take my, um, I, I think I got it from one of these holistic <laughs> shops with uh, jewelry and stones and stuff. Anyway, it's really nice because you can hold on to it with the little uh, shiny stones it's more difficult so so this is really nice Because this porcelain is still a little bit on the soft side, I'm going to use this uh, very flexible uh, rib um, that will probably make it even more um, smooth. <laughs> it's more with the stoneware. I also need to um, to push in the stones to get a, an even surface. And of course, on, on porcelain, we don't have that uh, challenge. So I'm just using this. So now it looks nice and smooth. And with this one, it's much easier to pick it up because I can push my finger into the, to the mattress and, um, and grab it underneath, but still gotta be very careful. It's still on the soft side of leather heart, but I think that turns out really, really nice. And um, so now I just need to um, put my Marcus Mark on it, Maker's Mark. <laughs> Um, and we'll use this square one um, and put it right here. So, now ready to do eight more. So, the first four ones are made. Now I just need to do the other five. That's my first batch of the porcelain plates. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, the only thing left is for the plates to completely dry 
and bisfire them and then of course we will do glazing. That's a subject for another video. There's some complications with glazing, how you stack them, how you fill up your, your kiln with it and not least the kind of glaze that you're using. Because with plates you're gonna hit it with the, the cutlery and uh, that can leave marks and um, so you need a very strong glaze for that. But I will um, talk more about that in a coming video when these guys are ready to glaze. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I inspired you to make your own plates. It's actually not that difficult, so please go ahead. If you did enjoy it, please uh, subscribe so you'll be notified about new videos. Every Sunday I have a new video and then in between sometimes some small videos. But every Sunday I should have a new video, a long video like this coming up. Please subscribe, share, comment. Whatever you like, um, maybe you have some good ideas, some tips you want to share with the crowd here. So I just hope to see you soon again. Have a good day.